Hi folks, Dane here, and today I'm going to take the genre buster tag. So I was tagged to do this by Todd the Librarian. Here's Todd tagging me. And I'm going to tag Dane Cobain. So if you all haven't done this, jump in and give it a whirl. Thank you, Todd. And it was created by Buckax, whose channel I have recently subscribed to. So hello, Buckax. Buckax. Said that word. There's a set of seven questions here that I'm going to answer and then I'm going to tag three people to take this tag next. So, without further ado, here we go. The genre buster tag. Question one. Do you prefer books that develop characters in depth or books with a fast paced plot? I guess, I think everybody's answer to this one is that they like a little bit of both, really. As a writer, I tend to write stories with the more fast-paced plots, whereas as a reader, I love it when they go in depth. As long as I like the characters, though, it can be a bit hit and miss. But I've been reading a lot of Stephen King lately, and he's kind of notorious for going into that depth. Often into too much depth, but it does also make sure that all of his characters are kind of really three-dimensional. So, um... Yeah, I think as a reader, which I'm assuming I should answer as, um, I prefer the books where it goes into more depth. Question number two. Do you prefer light-hearted, optimistic books or books that explore the darker side of life? I think I probably would prefer the darker books. I know I do read a lot of darker books. Yeah, books like this is more, I guess, <laughs> my, my, my taste in books. Um, I do read some happier books, but I think I enjoy them less. I know, I just think things are more, more interesting to read about when they're falling apart than when they're all just perfect. Yeah, there's a certain beauty in exploring the darker side of life, I think. You know, even awful things can be beautiful. Question number three. Do you prefer books that get straight to the point or books that challenge language and style? It's nice to have a mix, I'm not gonna lie. I think, I think you can challenge language and style and still get straight to the point. So... My answer for this is I prefer books that get straight to the point. I, I don't like it when something like Animal Farm, for example, you could have written Animal Farm and made that four times longer, like beat the reader around the head with the message. And it would have taken away from the book. The whole beauty of Animal Farm is the fact that it does get to the point. Question number four. Do you prefer books that introduce you to new ideas and issues or books that purely aim to entertain? This one's an interesting one because this one is hard to answer as both a reader and a writer. The only thing I would say is that it is possible to do both. Animal Farm again kind of informs and entertains at the same time. However, I think I do prefer ones that... I prefer books that make you think, which isn't really either of these options. I guess, yeah, books that introduce you to new ideas and issues. But equally books that make you rethink your approach to something that you think you knew. I mean, it's a, if you think about scientists, for example, I think I have a scientific approach to literature in that scientists may have a theory and they may believe things work in a certain way, but they would love to disprove it. If we could, you know, if we could prove the existence of God tomorrow, scientists would be perversely happy because scientists like evidence and they like it when their, you know, beliefs and assumptions are challenged. And that's how I uh, I think books are. They should, you know, they should make you change the way that you look at the world and see it through somebody else's eyes. Even if you don't agree with that person, at least you can kind of empathise more with that kind of person. Question number five. Do you enjoy books with graphic descriptions of violence, swearing, etc., or actively avoid them? Because that's an either or, I guess I do enjoy books with graphic descriptions of violence and swearing. I mean, I don't actively avoid them. I don't actively seek them out. If it's there, it's there. I certainly don't find it off-putting in a way that a lot of people do. Question number six. Do you typically go for specific genres and why? I guess I do. I... I tend to, no, I'm, I guess not actually, because I, what I do is I go for specific authors usually. So I'll, like Stephen King's an example, I'll pick an author and just read the entire bibliography. Uh, Terry Pratchett, Graham Greene, um, all the uh, all of the um, um, Ian Fleming books, for example, not just the James Bond books. I thought I might as well finish them. So I tend to go by author, I guess. When I, when I break that and buy other ones, it tends to be either indie writers who I know and who I want to support, or it tends to be somebody has offered to send me a book and I've said, yeah, okay, I'll read that book. And uh, I get sent offers for all sorts of different genres and I think I probably do lean towards some genres more than others, but it's not a conscious thing. So I don't know. I do like to read classical literature, especially like 20th century classics, modern classics. 
And question number seven, what is your favourite genre busting book? Now this is the first one that's specifically about a book, so I pre-prepared pre this. I picked um, Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett. And, well the reason this is a genre busting book is because with Terry Pratchett, to begin with it's kind of fantasy and humour mixed in. Feet of Clay is also kind of like a murder who done it as well. And it's um, also kind of a political book because it's a it's basically about equal rights for different you know, equal rights for golems, you know. Um, so it covers a lot of ground in this one book. And um, the reason I picked it as my favourite is it's because it's the the first Discworld book that I remember reading. And um, it's the one that really got me into the series. I mean, I've read this over and over a bunch of times. You can see by the weird way the cover's just like, I don't know, it's just, it's yellowed and stuff. But it's uh, an incredible book and I strongly recommend reading this if, if you haven't read it already. And this is even, I would say, it's a good place to get into the Discworld series. You don't have to read them all in order. So if you haven't started and you've been putting it off because you don't know where to start, read Feet of Clay, you'll love it. And so, that is that, those are the seven questions. I'm now gonna tag three people. So first of all, I'm gonna tag Ilse's books and uh, bring the pugs as well, please. I'm gonna tag Missy from Binge Reader. I'm gonna tag Kevin, who is also known as Irish Reader. You three all cover a big wide range of different types of books. So, um, you know, I'm sure we're gonna get everything from young adult to more horror here to, um, you know, whatever I don't even I don't even know anymore so thanks a lot for watching don't forget to leave a comment to let me know uh, your answers to these questions whether you've ever read Feet of Clay and if not when you're gonna buy it hit a subscribe if you would like to and I will see you soon bye bye